Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Abby, and today I'm going to be crocheting Sandshrew and Sandslash. Sandshrew was one of my favorite Pokemon growing up because it looked like an armadillo, and armadillos were my absolute favorite animal. I have ideas in my mind. I didn't color it or anything. Maybe if I do this at the right angle, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So here's a little look into my mind, my planning process. According to this, I should be making about 21 pieces for Sandshrew and 44 pieces for Sandflash, so it looks like it's gonna be about double. That's really mostly because of the quills on Sandslash. I have to make every one of those separately, I think, for it to look right. I don't really know how I do it otherwise. Just a rough estimate based off of Sand Slash's picture. I'm thinking, well in this I wrote 20, but I think a little bit less than that with the quills. Anyway, without much further ado, let's crochet. Hello again. For some behind the scenes drama for you, I have actually already recorded this audio, but it turned out really terribly and I just couldn't listen to it editing so there was no way that I was going to put it in the actual video. I've recorded in this other closet before but the audio was just awful. There was too much reverb. Had to go back to my typical closet and re-record everything so here we are. I hope I can kind of remember everything that I was talking about because I didn't re-listen to the whole 20 minute rant that I did originally. Generally I like to record audio for double or triple what I'm hoping my time slot will be once everything is completely edited. And the reason for that is I have to restate things a lot of the time because I don't like certain takes. So I have to redo those takes and get clean takes. And so I have a lot to edit down always. I always have a lot to edit down. And the same can be said about the actual footage of what I do. I have tons of stuff to edit down for that. Many, many hours worth of stuff because the camera that I record with now records in real time. There's not really a time lapse button on it. I used to have a camera that I used at the very beginning of the Crochet Inch Hat series where it would do time lapse for me and so I would have small amounts of footage to upload and it was already time lapsed but the problem with that camera is the quality started feeling like it wasn't good enough. It is an older camera. I can't remember exactly when I got it but it wasn't new and so it wasn't the best quality and I wanted to upgrade that at least a little bit so I got a different camera but it doesn't do time lapse. A lot of cameras that do time lapse that I've found kind of suffer in quality a little bit because they're not really expecting you to have high quality footage of time lapses. A lot of times the way that they're marketing it is time lapse for giant work sites or overarching projects and not necessarily something small like what I'm working on. So quality is not really as important in that as it is for what I would like to put out there. I'd like to thank that my videos get better and better each time. At least that's what I kind of strive for. So I'm working towards bettering them, even if it means I have hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes of footage of me crocheting that I'm never gonna use for any other reason. That's just the way it goes sometimes, I guess. So let's talk a little bit about this specific project. I was originally excited to do Sandshrew and Sandslash, but that excitement kind of faded early on when I couldn't decide on the size that I wanted Sandshrew to be. And I was getting really frustrated because I want, or I wanted the Pokemon to kind of be generally where they would be on the size scale. But when I look back on some of the other Pokemon, there's no way that they're on the same size scale at all. For example, Weedle is not supposed to be as big as Charmander by any means. And um, I just wasn't, you know, in the mood to make him with thread because that's probably the size I would have to go to make the right sized Weedle. Maybe if I got paid enough and also didn't care about my eyesight as much, I would probably do a thread Weedle just for the fun of it. But I have done threaded crocheted projects before and it is difficult. My favorite one out of that was this little orange cat that was about the size of a quarter, I think. I probably have it somewhere. I haven't looked at it any time recently at all. It's fun to look at stuff that's super micro crocheted, but wow, I think that if I ever were to do it again, I'd probably need to get one of those 
big magnifying glasses that I could look at the project through so I wasn't destroying my eyes any more than they already are from crocheting as it stands. Anyway, I had a really tough time with these projects trying to get them the way that I wanted them. I had a bunch of redos for them. They took longer than I ever really anticipated these two to take because they seemed so easy when I first drew the pictures for them and I was ready and set to do it. And once I started, it just kind of went fully downhill somehow. So that's why I didn't get this specific video out in February. Luckily for me, I guess I kind of had a little bit of extra time having started Sandshrew in February. But the funny thing is, everything I did in February, I think I redid this month. I don't know how much of a head start that really is, if you think about it, but I did try. I'm just glad that they're done at this point. And maybe one day I will relook at them and try to figure out something better for them, but I just can't look at them right now. <laughs> That's kind of how it is with a lot of my projects. Uh, if I don't love them pretty much immediately, I'm like, I'm not going to look at you for a while and maybe I'll love you later, which happens actually. Some of the Pokemon that I did that I really didn't like, I look at now and I'm like, I'm so glad I made you, but not at the moment that I was making them did I feel like that. One of the things that I can remember that I was talking about when I originally recorded this audio was finding your own dedication towards your own work. And the reason for that was I had accidentally listened to a radio DJ, which happens sometimes when I am listening to a song that I really like on the radio and it ends and I kind of just space out in the happiness of hearing that song and the radio DJ will just slide right in there, start saying things, and then I kind of get invested and I can't not listen to it even though I really don't necessarily like listening to it. I don't know if that makes any sense. It's not like I have anything against radio DJs and it'd probably be fun to be one, but I don't always intend to listen to them. That's why I say accidentally. Anyway, he was talking about how working from home has really messed with people's productivity. And the reason for that, according to some study somewhere, is people aren't watching other people work and so they're not as motivated to doing their own work. So what he suggested to do was to find a work buddy and video call them while you're both doing your work so you can see each other doing work and feel more motivated to do your own. And I just thought that was hilarious because honestly, I would never be able to do that. Like, I don't think that would work. If I am cool enough to contact a coworker, I like talking to them. And there's no way that I would be able to call them and be like, hey, let's just live stream each other's workload right now and not really talk because that's just not gonna happen. If I called my sister right now and asked her to just like hang out with me while I was editing and she was doing her own work, we'd start talking. There's no way on earth that we wouldn't talk and probably get even less done. So honestly, if you want to kind of follow that directive to help you stay motivated to do your own work, I feel like you might as well go find one of those lo-fi videos of a person working who isn't going to talk to you and just look at that and be like, wow, they're, they're really doing their work right there. So I'm going to do mine. I don't know if that's even remotely the same, but I honestly would rather do that than call a coworker. This is also why I was talking about finding your own motivation and dedication to your work so you don't have to rely on watching other people do it because I don't really have coworkers in that sense for what I do in general and what I do on this channel. So if I were in a office building where I saw other people editing videos, I don't know how that would change my productivity because I've never had that. I'd like to think I'm somewhat productive. I, I get my work done, but it's really close to my personal deadlines, which is the end of the month. So I don't know how productive you could call that. I take a lot of breaks, but eventually the work does get done. And I am very proud of that because I don't even get paid for this so money is not really a motivation in this it's just sort of my own personal project I don't know if I have a lot of tips that I could tell you of things that you could do to stay motivated but for me giving myself little treats for things or saying that I can do something that I want to do if I finish this project or working towards specific goals that kind of really helps me stay on a track and continue doing this because if I don't I'm gonna let myself down. And I just feel like I owe it to myself, I guess, 
to continue doing this because I really want to and I really like doing it and I set this goal and I don't want to let myself down. Once I decide I want to do something, if I don't do it, it's letting myself down and that's just unacceptable. When you have projects that you don't get paid for, or you don't get any praise for, or anything like that, and it's just specifically for you, you should just do it because it's for you. It's a present for you and you're giving it to yourself. Anyway, I don't know if that made very much sense. I kind of went off on a weird tangent that I don't think I really went off on the first time around that I recorded this, but whatever. New me today, you're getting new audio today. I'm really excited for this project to be over with. Honestly, I am not necessarily looking forward to this triple evolution that's coming next, the Nidoran evolutionary tracks. I have the two of them, the female version and then the male version. I'm definitely not doing all six in one month. Like, are you kidding me? No, there's no way on this planet that I could do that. Even if I had the entire month off, I don't think I could do all six of them. But maybe that's just because I'm telling myself that I can't. So yeah, you know, dedication would really come in handy, but I'm, I just, I really don't want to do all six. So I'm going to do three one month, three in the next month. Hopefully they're not going to be as insane as this set. But I think part of that is because Sandslash has all those quills. And so I had to make a ton of the same thing. And that was just really mind numbing. And I didn't like it. Since I'm coming to the end of the footage that I have, let's go ahead and get into those glam shots. Here they are. <laughs> I cannot believe how long it took to make these two. Just a little bit in perspective because I don't think I originally started writing in my videos how long it took to make each of them. These two took about the same amount of time that I used to make the Venusaur and Charizard evolutionary sets. Even though it took me so long trying to figure out how I wanted to do Sandshrew, I think Sandshrew is now one of my favorites is in the top. Hall of Fame of my favorites. <laughs> I'd be really upset if after all those redos I still didn't like him. I'm hoping this doesn't carry over into the Nidoran evolutionary tracks because those are the next ones and I haven't done a uh, three Pokemon evolution in a while. Anyway, I'm hoping that the Nidoran evolutionary track is gonna be easier for me. <laughs> I know they're kind of different than any of the ones that I've done so far. So I guess we'll see. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me make these and that it wasn't as difficult a process to watch as it was to make. If the patterns are up on my Etsy, the links will be in the description. If they aren't there yet, don't worry, I'm working on it and they will get there soon. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.